story time about how I pooped on my boyfriend's bed because he cheated on me with his ex. Disclaimer is not my story time with sending me the Instagram. <laughs> I know that it's so gross, but I think it's justified and you guys are gonna agree with me. I met this man's at the doctor. At start, I know. Came in with a bad cold thinking I had COVID, but it was just a virus. He was there with his mom. Sitting in the waiting room and he keeps looking at me. I do my nose is dripping and I feel absolutely disgusting, so I thought he was just like judging me. After about 20 minutes, he comes over to me and hands me his phone. He says, put your number in. I laughed and I was like, are you for real? And he's like, yeah, I'd love to take you out on a date. And his mom looks over at me and waves at me. They both tricked me. Fast forward to about six months. Our relationship was pretty good. I would say the only problem we had was that he let his mother control his life. I mean, clearly, because he's such a mama's boy. But I tried not to let this deter me. I mean, I'm also close with my mom, but she doesn't try to control everything about my life. At this point, I had heard about his ex, and all he ever said was that they had a good relationship and that they were still amicable. To me, it was a good sign. He never spoke badly about her, but he never told me about why they broke up. All of his friends and I go to a bar one night, and there's this girl there, and this girl targets me the entire night. She sits next to me, is super nice, and we chat. I'm thinking at that point that she's just another friend. But then my boyfriend's best friend turns to me and says, you know that's his ex, right? At that point, I'm like, oh my god, no way. There's one thing about me that you need to know. I am not a jealous person. I am very, very secure. What I do require is complete respect. I look over at my boyfriend and I'm like, oh my gosh, you didn't tell me that this was your ex. He just laughs it off like nothing. Then his ex tells me, oh, we should go get lunch tomorrow. And I, of course, say yes. I mean, I didn't see a reason for me to say no. The only day I show up to the freaking restaurant only to wait for her for an hour. She's an hour late. Luckily, I was doing work on my phone, so I kind of got distracted. But when she finally shows up, she starts talking trash about my boyfriend. And she's like, I need to spill all the tea. And here's where she insinuated that he had stolen money from her. He was not faithful. And that all he cared about was his mom. I was stunned. And to be honest, I did not believe her. I told her that I would need to experience those things for myself to be able to confirm it. But that I was sorry that that was her experience with him. A few seconds later, I look down and she gets a message from my boyfriend. This is when she says, oh, and by the way, he's been seeing me for three weeks. And she tells me that every time he says he can't hang out with me, it's because he's hanging out with her. The reason that she was an hour late is because she was at his apartment. This is when I was really sick to my stomach, like literal diarrhea. She apologized and started to cry as if she's the victim. And she hands me a key to his apartment and tells me that I should go over there and speak to him. When I show up, he's not there. I start looking around the apartment to find some evidence and sure enough, I find her disgusting dirty ass thong in his hamper. Go to the bed, pull off the sheets and there's a used you know what. And like I said, my stomach was already rumbling. I didn't even think about it twice. Got on top of the bed, pulled my pants down, squatted and did my business. It was watery and it was everywhere. I cleaned myself off and left the apartment. Two hours later, he calls and tells me you'll never believe what happened. He tells me how he showed up to his apartment and somebody had taken it on the bed. So I convinced him that it was probably his ex, that she had told me that they had been having an affair. He swears up and down that she's telling a lie, that all she wants is for us to break up. So here's what I did. I hung up the phone and blocked him on everything. A liar will always be a liar, and a cheater will always be a cheater. Guess what? A few weeks later, they're engaged. Why would he waste my time like that? Softcare sister out. I got jumped, so get ready with me to fight at school. So I literally got jumped at school this weekend, so I'm like, okay, when I come back to school on Monday, I'm going to get my look back. It's two important characters to the story. We're gonna name them Raleigh and Polly. Me and Raleigh and Polly have the same first period together, and that's kind of how we all know each other. So I usually sit in the front of the classroom, so I'm over here, you know, minding my business, and I hear from the back of me, look at that outfit. Who you talking to? Uh, I know if the shoe fit, don't wear it, but I had a whole pink outfit on. So I'm like, okay, like, I have a lot to talk about me because I'm the brightest one in the room. Everybody is wearing, like, so I didn't respond to it at first, but then I started hearing laughing. So I'm like, okay. So I turn around. I'm like, what's so funny? Because, like, what's going on? Like, huh? Go out picking for a fight, but I feel like it just finds me. Only over here talk about some okay, and I was talk about you now what? So girl, I'm like, okay, you don't want to do that with me, girl. I got 99 jokes for you. So now we start roasting, and we start, like, you know, roasting each other back and forth, back and forth. So it gets to the point where I stand up. I'm like, okay, like, what's the problem? Like, what's for real, for, for real? So everybody had to calm me down. They had to call them down, too, because I don't know what they were on. They was jumping like some jumping jacks. So after the period ended, the teachers had to hail them back so they can talk to the teacher because I wasn't the one that was doing the most. They supposed to talk about me first, so I'm like, okay, girl, like, what's really going on? So I'm walking to my second period class, and I'm one of the first people there, and the teacher's not even in the classroom, like, mind you. So it's just me in the back, you know, taking down all the chairs, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm like, okay, I feel my spotty sense is tingling, like, I don't know. I just get kind of paranoid out of nowhere. When I get to my seat, I get to take my seat down. Girl, I hear, I'm like, ugh. Girl, it's Rowley and Polly like storming at me, girl. Like, don't like y'all, it's Dex right here, and she's like storming at me. So I pick up my chair that I didn't take down. I'm like, move, boom, girl. I threw it at him, girl, but I didn't hold him back because Polly came from around, girl, and just it was a disaster. So they did what they did and they hurried up and rushed out the room, girl, when I was on the ground. So I'm like, okay, this is crazy. So now I have to get my look back tomorrow. I canceled my aunt's invitation to my wedding, although she traveled across the country. My husband and I got married three weeks ago. He is from South Africa. I am French, and we decided to have our wedding in South Africa, where he is from. 
we rented a lodge for two days. The first day would be our wedding day and then the second day would be a pool party. My husband and I decided to only invite 30 people, which would be the people we love the most and who have always been there for both of us. The thing is, I used to be really close to one of my aunts, but eight years ago, we did have a huge argument, so we cut ties. While I was doing the invitations, my aunt crossed my mind, and I honestly just remembered how close her and I used to be, so I thought, why not invite her? Let me add her to my guest list. I sent out the invitation to my aunt whenever I finished making them, and I made sure to emphasize that there was no plus one, meaning that she could not her husband and neither her kids and to be fair i really never met her partner neither her kids i am aware that not inviting certain people might trigger other people but at the end of the day it isn't my wedding i feel like people should respect my opinion and my decision especially because the only people that i wanted at my wedding are people that i actually speak to my aunt was happy but she insisted that we invite her husband and her kids and i told her no her mom ended up teaming up with her and pressuring me to invite her partner and her kids although i said no so i just found it very disrespectful the fact that they couldn't respect my decision although i didn't need to i still explained to my aunt and my mom that the ceremony meant the world to me and i only wanted people there that i knew and i love my aunt still didn't care and she ended up booking a flight for her entire family although I told her I did not want anybody there but herself and she took it upon herself and said that the reason she did that was because she had heard that a lot of my guests canceled and that there would be space, meaning space for her family to come. I told her that her family would not be able to attend the ceremony but I did give in a little bit and I told her that her family is welcome the second day which is the day of like the pool party. After that, I got even more pressured by my mother to invite them to the actual ceremony and her excuse was because they traveled this far to come. And the thing is, I only invited my aunt and she took it upon herself to invite the rest of the family knowing that I told them no. So it's really their fault. The day of the actual wedding, my husband and I ended up leaving to a different city to go take pictures with the photographer. We were gone for, I wanna say roughly an hour and we ended up coming back. As soon as my husband and I came back to the lodge, I ran into my aunt and she looked at me. She had her kid in her hand and her partner, her husband was standing right behind her. And I think the part that really bothered me and triggered me was the fact that she had a smirk on her face. Although I was very upset because they couldn't listen to one simple rule that I had, I still ended up saying hello to the kid and her husband. I'm not gonna lie, I looked to my husband and I was really, really sad and disappointed in myself because I didn't stand up for myself at that moment. Shortly after, I heard my mother and my grandma telling my aunt that she should stay for dinner. They basically told my aunt that they had extra chairs and extra food, so she must. Not, oh, let me give you the choice. My mother was like, oh, you must stay for dinner. And my aunt basically responded and said that she never intended to stay for dinner, that she'll just be back tomorrow during the pool party. I don't know if I made this decision out of emotion, but I had a change of plans, and I basically uninvited my aunt to the pool party tomorrow and maybe a lot of people might not agree but the fact that they couldn't respect my decision from the very beginning just triggered me a lot and I basically uninvited her to the pool party the next day. My mother, who is an absolute sweetheart, lost it when I opened my mouth and I said that and she basically yelled at me telling me that I had no right to cancel my aunt's invitation and I made sure to tell my mother and emphasize to her that I ended up paying for the wedding so I have the right to invite and uninvite whoever I wanted. To this day, I will never understand why mothers feel like they have the right to host or invite whoever they want but this is my wedding, not yours.